What is reverse T3? It clogs receptor sites. It goes up with stress and illness and inflammation and low calories. It acts as a metabolic break. It's going to clog that receptor site. All right. It's going to impact it, right? It may compete with T3 for binding sites. It may block T3 action or at least decrease it. Again, may explain low thyroid symptoms when TSH looks normal and T4 also looks normal. Again, what the science says, models show reverse T3 fits certain receptor sites, right? This integrin AVB3 and high RT3 linked to symptoms, especially T4 only therapy. I'll show you some studies on that. Again, low affinity for nuclear receptor sites. That means it doesn't have a ton of um, receptor site affinity and many endocrinologists see it as biologically inactive. So we have for or against. Now, here's the thing. When we look at reverse T3, why it's high, we may get reverse T3 down and reverse T3 may not be the root cause, but it's a marker that other things are happening. And so we have to entertain both theories. And so I try to look at everything. When we make a change and we get someone's insulin or blood sugar better, there's so much downstream that's happening with inflammation, with glycation, with nutrients, with Krebs cycle. Even if if we work in the domino rally and we knock the first one to two dominoes over, we're going to be in a great place out of the gate.